why your diet suddenly stops working. Maybe you started a diet, you made some progress, you lost some fat, but now you've reached a plateau, you're stuck, you're not sure what's going on or what's happened. Well, that's why I'm making this video. I'm gonna explain what's going on, uh, how you can prevent this from happening so that you can continue to lose fat and make progress with your diet, all right? So why has your diet suddenly stopped working? Well, the first thing, to consider is have you actually reached a plateau or does it just seem like you've reached a plateau because the body is 60 to 70 percent water okay We're, we are more water than we are anything else and different types of foods will impact and influence how much water we hold on to for example if we eat more carbohydrates if we eat more if we consume more sodium we will hold on to more water so and if you just look at the scale weight alone it might appear that your scale weight is not coming down but you're still losing body fat it's entirely possible for your scale weight to go up and for you to lose body fat because of this huge fluctuations in the amount of water that your body is holding on to so the first thing to consider is have you actually reached a plateau yet or does it just appear that you have and the way you can mitigate this is by weighing yourself every single morning before you drink anything, weigh yourself every single morning and make sure you track it somewhere so we can see a graph over time, which is hopefully trending down, right? And also take progress pictures every single week. Same place, same lighting, same day of the week, every single week, front, rear, side. And if you look at the photos and you can see improvements, but the scale weight hasn't budged, then you are still making progress. It's just the scale weight isn't telling the full picture. That's the first thing to be aware of. The second thing to be aware of is whenever you start something new, typically your motivation is the highest and that's where you're the most compliant and that's where you're more likely to just do everything correctly. But over time, you know, especially if you're tracking all your foods, it can get a little bit tedious. And then you can forget about the oil that you put on the salad, or you can forget about the milk that you put in your coffee. Or, and there's just little things throughout the day that you're not tracking. So what you're tracking and, 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 and the foods that you're eating and how much you think you're eating versus how much you're actually eating, there can be a huge discrepancy there. You know, if it's anywhere from like 200 to 300 calories, well, that's the difference between losing weight and not losing weight. So that's another thing to be aware of. But really what I wanna talk about in this video is if you have actually reached a plateau. So let's imagine for a second that you've been tracking everything correctly, you've been weighing yourself, uh, there's no visible progress in the mirror, what do you do, okay? So first of all, just, we just need to understand that we have calories in and calories out. And you can imagine this as like a scale, right? So if we wanna lose fat, we wanna pull the calories down. So calories in needs to be lower than calories out. So we're gonna lose fat, right? So say you're at 2,500, we go down to 2,000 calories, okay? Now we're at 2,000 calories, now there is a gap, an energy gap, we're gonna lose weight. What determines calories out is made up of four things. The biggest one being our BMR, which is our basal metabolic rate. A basal metabolic rate is how much energy it costs to just keep the lights on, to just keep us alive, you know, just to keep our heart pumping, our brain working. If we just laid on the floor and did nothing all day, how many calories we burn throughout the day? That would be our BMR, okay? That's the first thing and the biggest thing. Second thing is our NEAT, our non-exercise activity thermogenesis. Me right now, I'm speaking, I'm blinking, I'm moving my arms around. This is non-exercise activity thermogenesis because it's still burning calories, but I'm not doing any like formal form of exercise, right? That's the second thing. They're the two big ones that we're gonna focus on, but there's another two uh, ways that we increase our calories out. The third way is the thermic effect of food, okay? now. Fats, proteins, and carbs all have a different thermic effect of food, where protein is the highest and fats is the lowest and carbs is somewhere in the middle. So if you want to increase the thermic effect of food, you can simply 
eat more protein. Now a little hack that I've got for you is if you're in a calorie deficit and you're hungry all the time, what you can do is reduce your fats and your carbohydrates and increase your protein and this is going to keep you more satiated, keep you more full for longer. That's a little hack I've got for you. So that's the third, third component of the calories out equation. Fourth is um, exercise activity you know when you actually do your exercise whether you're lifting weights or whether you you taking steps on, on uh, going for a walk or doing some cardio or whatever that's the third component that's pretty much stays the same regardless of whether you're in like a deficit or a surplus or anything like that there may be small variations but typically not so much the biggest two levers that we want to focus on is the first two okay is your bmr because that's going to be 60 to 70 percent of your calories out and you need to non-exercise activity thermogenesis okay so now that we're aware of this balance what i want you to understand is that the body is extremely intelligent okay and we have evolved up from cavemen cavemen and women and if you go back thousands and thousands of years when we would have lived in caves we wouldn't have had three square meals every day there would have been periods of time where we wouldn't have had any food and there would have been starvation and there would have been famine. And if our bodies didn't have some inbuilt mechanisms to be able to deal with these periods of energy uncertainty, we wouldn't, we wouldn't be a very effective species and I probably wouldn't be having this conversation with you right now, okay? So what happens is in periods of uh, starvation or in periods where the energies that we're consuming is lower our bodies get more efficient with the energy that we're using okay if you've ever done like a fast for a long time like i've done a fast of up to seven days you'll notice that you lose quite a bit of weight at the beginning but then it starts to plateau off because your body slows down your metabolism it stops burning the fire quite as strong because it needs to conserve energy okay so your body simply just gets more efficient over time with the calories that you're consuming. Another way to kind of think about this is let's say uh, you got a pay cut, or you got a 50% pay cut, so now you have 50% less money coming in than you had before. Well, now that's a serious problem. Now you've got to think about, okay, well, I need to save money. Maybe I've got to stop eating at restaurants. Maybe I've got to cook all my own food. Maybe I've got to find a new place with lower rent, etc. You're just becoming more efficient with the resources that you're having in. And that's exactly what the body is doing. That's one part of it. The second part of it is to do with your NEAT, your non-exercise activity thermogenesis. And this is quite a sneaky one because this will happen subconsciously. Now, if you've ever seen anyone who's been in a dieting phase for a long time, typically they'll blink less, they'll talk with less energy, they'll move around less, they'll just be cons trying to conserve energy as much as possible, even without thinking about it, okay? And I know, like whenever I've been in a deficit, you know, everything just feels so much harder and just subconsciously, uh, I take, I do less movement throughout the day. So they're the two things that we really wanna focus on and be aware of. Now, I'm a big fan of tracking steps every single day, and if we can keep the steps somewhat consistent every single day, then we pretty much know that the, the NEAT is quite, it's gonna be okay. There's, there's still gonna be a reduction in NEAT, we can't really get around that, but that's just something to consider. And obviously, we know that the BMR is gonna come down over time, so what can you do? Well. Don't make the big mistake that a lot of people make is that they try, uh, say if they were to imagine their fat loss, right? And they're coming down too quick. They're making too many jumps down the calories too quickly and they're increasing their activity too fast. Yes, what's gonna happen is your fat loss is gonna come down very quick, but it can only come down so far until we reach a floor, okay? And once we get to this floor, this is where your calories can't come down anymore and you can't do any more movement simply because life becomes unbearable, okay? You know, that the, the, you have zero energy, you can't adhere to it, you can't function, just life is not worth living anymore. And at that point, 
we're not going to get any more fat loss okay we've got to increase the calories and decrease the movement to get you to a point where you're in a, a, a better state okay so the slower we get to that floor okay the more fat loss we're going to be able to get so really the best approach is to make small incremental improvements uh, incremental say reductions in calories or small incremental increases in the number of steps that you're taking to try and squeeze out as much fat loss at each stage and by doing that we can have a more consistent fat loss curve and get more fat loss out of the you know the period that we're trying to lose fat okay now a lot of people just try and go too fast too quick they burn out they hit a calorie floor and then the only option is to to reverse diet back up and obviously you know there's not going to be any fat loss that occurs at that time all right guys so hopefully that helps hopefully that explains metabolic adaptation it's actually a very good thing if our bodies weren't intelligent and didn't do this we would have starved to death probably many many thousands of years ago and we wouldn't be here right now but just expect these plateaus okay a lot of people you know they get frustrated and they start to panic and they start to make emotional decisions when they see a plateau and just understand that it's normal okay and if you have the mindset that you expect it and plateaus are going to come and it's part of the course then when that does happen you're not going to be surprised you're not going to be shocked you're not going to make any knee jolt decisions you're just going to look at the facts and make an objective decision based off that all right guys if you need any help with your training your nutrition your lifestyle building muscle, fat loss, optimizing your health, anything like that. I do coaching. You can work with me personally. All the links are down below. If you want to grab my best fitness protocols, it's absolutely free. They're also down below as well. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did and you want to know the easiest and quickest way to quickly lose body fat, go and watch this video here and I will see you in the next one.